Hey there, everybody. P. Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another episode. It's day 17 of albums that are 40 years old in 2022. As we uh, look back on the great year that was 1982, all sorts of killer music released that year. All sorts of genres, right? We're picking our favorites, 28 favorites, 28 days of February celebrating these 40-year-old albums this year. So this particular one released September 9th, 1982 for the Anthem label, produced by Terry Brown and the band. Of course, I'm talking about the ninth studio album from uh, Canada's Rush, Signals. That's right. Geddy Lee, Neil Peart, Alex Lifeson. It's all you needed here. Although there is a uh, guest appearance by none other than Ben Mink, plays electric violin on Losing It, uh, but otherwise it's just three guys. As always, right, one of the greatest power trio, I guess you can call them power trios, one of the best rock trios of all time, whether you call them prog or hard rock or whatever. Uh, Rush, one of the legendary bands of all time. So, of course, this would be an album... You know, we talk about Rush a lot here on the channel and how they have all these different eras. Generally speaking, you know, Rush would release a live album right around the time where the band's ready to kind of move on to sort of a different style, right? So you got like those early albums and the big kind of sci-fi concept pieces, right? And then you've got uh, kind of moving pictures, I guess was the bridge to doing other stuff. And then you've got, you know, Signals, Grace Under Pressure and those Power Windows and whatnot coming after the more 80s albums. Then you've got, you know, the beginning of the night, you got Show of Hands comes out and to the 90s, they're moving into different type of sounds again, right? So Rush is just kind of like reinventing invented themselves all throughout their career and signals you know which followed up the mega mega hit uh moving pictures album signals signaled uh a shift into more you know less guitar focused music uh and more melodic keyboard driven sounds <clears throat> although there's still plenty of guitar on this album but you know you listen to this album uh next to permanent waves or moving pictures drastically different right but some great tracks on here uh this is one of those albums you know we talked about this again this this album was featured uh in one of our 82 album wars on in the prog seat going up, up against jethro tull's broadsword and the beast and we talked a lot about how you know for some of us back in 82 when this album first came out this was kind of like a you know like a like someone threw cold water on her face right it's like whoa whoa that's a bit different from the album that we that came before it and all the ones before that right and it took a little while to get kind of used to this uh, i dug this back in the day um but it was never one of my favorite rush albums i have found over the years that i have grown to really really appreciate signals quite a bit and there's actually some s splendid splendid songs on this particular album subdivisions is a rush classic I mean, the keyboards are just amazing on this. And, you know, the verse and the chorus, uh, the guitar solo is great. That's, the Getty's vocals are great. A lot of killer bass on this album, I might say. And really good guitar layers from Alex. I love Getty's uh, synths on this, on this particular record. I think they're just, they're used perfectly. It's not too much, right? There would there be times coming up over the next bunch of years where probably keyboards were a little featured too heavily uh here i think they use quite splendidly uh the analog kit great song great up-tempo rocker on here like i said killer bass line from uh from getty on this uh chemistry i like quite a bit i love the end i like it's moody and ominous love the guitar solo on here uh digital man great song uh the weapon love it dramatic moody uh, you got New World Man, which was the, uh, the single they released for the album. Bright, bouncy, you know, kind of, it's just the last song they did for the album just to kind of pad out the timing a little bit. It's amazing how you get these these legendary bands who had time to fill on an album and they were told to go back into the studio and just crank something out. And they do and psh, out it comes, right? At the time, I really wasn't into New World Man because I thought it was really light for Rush. But, you know, it's, it's actually a really cool, quirky song. Again, a great great bass line on it uh losing it is absolutely killer very timely from a lyrical perspective what's going on today and countdown i think is really cool great closer for this album uh it's you know it's kind of a serious you know the tone of the whole album is really different from some of the stuff that came before uh you know say what you want about the uh 
the album cover and you know the logo and stuff i was never nuts about the whole album cover presentation on here but you know what it doesn't matter when it comes down to it, it's all about the songs and i think the songs on here really really hold up so yeah signals is my choice for day 17 here uh, on our countdown of our favorite albums from 1982 so please let us know what you think about signals down below as well as your pick for day 17 and uh, while you're doing all that make sure you go and visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org our web zine has been on the internet for 21 years check out we've got over 23,000 reviews there we've got the link below to our ko-fi page for channel donations the link below to our merch page as well all sorts of cool sea tranquility stuff and make sure you subscribe here on youtube and click on that notification bell so you get alerted of all of our content and uh, because you know we want to make sure that we're all here together celebrating all this stuff talking about all this stuff each and every day all together all the damn time. I am Pete Pardo. Thanks for watching. Tune in tomorrow morning for another album that is 40 years old in 1982. And uh, we'll see you then, right? And uh, what else we got going on here? Oh, the Monsters Den tonight. Of course. Chris Allo, Rich Catino, and myself together again tonight talking about our five favorite horror franchises. Horror fantasy sci-fi franchises. Those, uh, those franchises that have multiple movies, three or more, that's the criteria. We're going to talk about some of our favorites of those. So that's what's happening tonight on the Monsters Den tomorrow morning. Martin Popoff and I back at the Fun House once again. Saturday is the UK Connection with Simon Bray, Stephen Reed, and myself. And Sunday, of course, is album homework assignment. So uh, lots of cool stuff happening this week. Uh, we've got some uh, album rankings, lots of album rankings in the works in the coming weeks. So stay tuned for that as well. And uh, we'll see you real soon. I'm Pete Pardo. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye-bye.